So where would you on this on this where would you, are you talking about putting it right here? Mm -hmm. Is this where it's going yes. to come this way? Yep. Okay. And on sheet on sheet two of the drawings, it'll it's hit. in this drawing right here. It'll show it. Oh, I see it. Oh, it just comes right over to that corner. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Yeah. And, and if you're leaving it, and, and there's, my con not concern, but my issue was that if there was uh, someone having somewhat of a private party under the pavilion where you didn't want to interfere, and, and you could get to the restroom <coughs> from the parking lot, and you could also leave it and, and go over the grass, you know, where the Quonset hut is, and then kind of, you know, not, not interfere, or you could use the sidewalk however you need like. But, um, anybody parks who just wants to go look at the park, go to the beach, they can park there and get on the sidewalk, get to the restroom, and, and not interfere with other people. That, that's kind of why I position it there. Yeah, kids running to and from, they're not out in traffic on the car so much. Yeah. Are you okay with the location? I am. Yeah. I, I like it on that side of the road with, with the pavilion rather than out in the open area that might be the soccer field ball diamond area. Now yeah, the, that was the idea. The we existing to leave one, that open over there. The, the existing one today is pumped out once or twice a year. This one would have to have truck access to it right, for that purpose. Well, I think you Wouldn't can bring it? your uh, uh, suction line. Mm -hmm. I think you can get to that, that length. I'll find out. How That's, far is that? I'll find out. Mm -hmm. That's about 50 feet. No, that's a good question. We, we definitely need to be services. It has to be services with the truck. The, the, the uh, sidewalk area um, is going not just, it's not just going to be five feet and then drop off. I mean, it, there's not much of a drop off, but we're going to make it about a 15 foot wide, five foot sidewalk centered around a 15 foot wide, nice grade so it could be mobile and you can probably get a truck. <laughs> yeah, if the sidewalk and pathway was built wide enough for the truck. Right. It won't be all concrete, but it'll be firm ground. Correct. What do you need a culvert? Well, you said you kind of put a culvert in there because it does. It drains right yeah. now from on right. the south side of the parking lot. It drains away from. Right. So we need to get we, something. We might have to have a culvert in there. Um, and that sidewalk would probably have to be something other than four inch. If we're going to drive on it, right? Well, six inch. Especially, uh, uh, yeah, a but soccer I'll, truck. I'll I'll call some septic uh, money wagons and just see how they can service that. Well, why don't you check with John Sexton or somebody locally that we'd probably use, right? Mm -hmm. We would use John. Yeah, let's call John Sexton to see what he's got because he would be our guy. Well, he has been doing the work over there all along. Uh, yeah, but I mean, say if we move yeah, it. Yeah, no, we'll what, send that to if him. If we move it, would this work for him? His comments. We, can, we can lengthen the roof if you want to see two foot. If you want to see uh, an interior lockable on the last, in the back, foot or two, and still have a changing room so it would be dual purpose. Do you want to? Okay. I don't know changing room. Oh, well, I think we need to vote on that. Okay, well, we'll vote on the whole thing in a minute. We want to go through the cost. Okay. You have that in front of you? Yep. Okay. You can see what that cost. I still have a 15% contingency in there. That, that's a big dollar amount for this side of the project. So. I was a little bit surprised about the cost of the demolition of the existing toilet. It's the, uh, is that trying, is it the disposable? All, everything in that vault has to be treated as hazardous waste and oh. it all has to go to a um, uh, facility that's certified to handle it. We had the same issue when we demoed out the vault toilet over here. Okay. And that takes your cost. Yeah. I knew that was going to happen. And what did you say, just so I can, when I get asked, what was the difference between the vault toilets and the um, Murdoch's toilets? I guess that's the 37.5 line. The, I, I can't give you a good straight answer on that because I, they did not provide me with good dollars for what I would get. Based on what they provided me, the dollars was about $39,500 for, a, for a, a system a building that was delivered. It was a metal building. It's not even apples to apples. It was a metal building um, with the vaults. Uh, it's very similar to what we had as far as the toilets and the lockable <coughs> toilet paper holder and all of that. Um, 
things that were not provided were, were the privacy fence, uh, the concrete slabs, um, and I can forward the emails with their quotes for that. But I, so I'm guessing at this point it would be at least a ten to fifteen thousand dollar increase by using the Murdoch system. But it would be the <coughs> comparison is the thirty-seven five to the thirty-nine five, right? No, it would no. Be, no um, <coughs> it would be thirty-nine five. Then you'd have to hire a contractor to unload it. No, no. I'm just talking okay. about your thirty-seven five. Okay. <coughs> That's built in place, ready to go. That's built in place, ready to go. Okay, that's the that's the slab and everything, right? Slab and that's based on the two or three estimates that we bid out in the last four or five years, including the pictures that you showed. <coughs> okay, so that's uh, that's. And I think me. you probably. So you're saying I we'd have to add concrete slab fence. Um, well, he didn't have shingles. So Ten to fifteen thousand. Siding on the Murdoch building. Did you do any signs? discussion with Murdoch? I yes. Just, you talked to him personally? Not with Mr. Murdoch, but with people. Actually, the email said, don't talk to him, talk to my people. And I spoke with his people, and they were very nice. They gave me what I needed. It was just, you know, I asked questions, and they didn't really answer my question. They gave me more selections. And, and I'm just figuring from based on my experience with doing pre-engineered buildings yep. that it would be about 10 to 15. It's a very nice building. It's just, it would be that much more expensive for this setting. Okay. I just don't want us to, to move over this lately when, you know, we've had a, a resident come and forth and say, I'm willing to, you know. Right, and I, I can certainly hand you all the documentation. <coughs> I'm fine. I just want to make sure we've done it right. So I'm fine with that. Okay. I, I think I have a conservative estimate, but it's based on previous historical buildings that we've done similar in size. So. Okay. What is the pleasure of the board? Uh, I've got a question on the interior. Again, for cleaning, you've got uh, half-inch interior paneling or plywood with high-gloss white latex finish. What if the interior was done with smooth, not textured FRP? Um, it could be. I'm not sure what those panels would be, but this uh, uh, inside plywood is a smooth surface, one-sided smooth surface. It's painted. A BC. Um, but it's type, a BC. It's a, I think it's a, <coughs> or an AC. It's an AC. AC. One-sided smooth. It says it. Uh, I think it's a. Um, but if you wanted to do a, a you know reinforced plastic type of is that we referring to? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the the type of stuff they use in restaurant kitchens. You, and the panel board, the thin. It's a thin plastic that's uh, ad adhesive bonded to the substrate. Uh, it comes textured and smooth. I would definitely encourage the use of the smooth. Uh, it's not vandal proof, but neither right. is paint. But uh, yeah. um, for common things. It would definitely, I think, clean easier than than a painted surface. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's something that the board wants uh, to put on at this point. We could certainly do that if if it's something. I think it's something that could be put on later as well if you do find yourself it difficult to maintain yeah, or it, so. It could be. I it's, agree. It's something we can do an hour later. It's just definitely whatever you prefer. Later. Okay. Yeah, if you thought about the fire hazard of that, somebody's mm -hmm. coming. No, it's not. It's not fire resistant. What I'm thinking is that you know you get. Well, I, I know you're thinking of cleaning, but yeah. it also is a fire problem. It'll go up much faster than the water. <coughs> Plastic will burn quick. I'm not saying it won't. No, I know, but <laughs> I th I know uh, you're. I'm, I'm looking at but a hazard is, oh, from oh. another air, from another direction. If, if you get a vandal that's set on doing something, yeah, the only thing that you can do that. is, <laughs> yeah, is basically build this thing out of block and double drywall to see Yeah, right. And they'll still do it. Well, but I can speak from experience, a block park restroom building with double drywall interior ceilings stood the test of some kids getting in there and setting the trash cans on fire. Oh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. It smoked up the building. The uh, walls had to be painted, we peeled off one layer of drywall and refinished and we still had restrooms. Yeah, sure. Um, but 
I don't think that's what we want. What additional cost would that be? For the RFP panel? No, for, it, for the block, a block. Oh, for a block? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know where to paint. But that happened on the, in the park. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Um, <coughs> it's got a lot more use than this thing's going to have to do. Yeah. You know, that's a problem. Okay. Um, I mean, the state park uses these. They're, uh, so does MDOT. They're all over the UP. Uh, and all the state forests. Yeah. Uh, um, and we can't get a grant for this, right? Or can we? I mean, I was reading something about we could apply for a grant. What was the, what's the status on grant for something like this? You, you can apply for grants. I mean, they take some bit time to apply and get approved or disapproved. Um, I mean, just I think the important part of this project, if it's on, it needs it needs to be on your recreation plan. It is on our recreation plan. And then you can apply for the trust fund grants, which are typically the grants that fund these type of improvements. But yep. if we do the work engineering or any of the work ahead of time, we don't get reimbursed for it. And so correct until we find out when the grants are done, which won't be until. December. Well, the only issue I'm saying is that, you know, we spend money like this when there's grant money available. It, you know, we haven't talked at all why we're it, not it doing won't grant. It won't happen this year, I guess, if, yeah. we, if, if you want to pursue the grant. Well, I'm just saying, why didn't we pursue the grant? That was my question. Why haven't we gone after a grant? I mean, why because was the thinking? Uh, Rachel, I don't care if it's five years. I want to know why we're well, spending we tons of money we when we could have gone after a grant. We wanted to make those people wait another Who didn't four feel or five that? years. Uh, that's a general consensus, I think, that we needed to get it done. We've been talking about this I, since 2009. I know, and that's why I'm wondering why we didn't do a grant. Well, 2009. the previous board didn't even want to get this far, and we've gotten this far, and uh, we have the money. Uh, that's and not the we point. We don't want to tie it up in DNR. That's not the point. The point is, if you could do this and have half of it paid for, and it would cost us 35000 versus 70000 what would be a better use of our money? I mean, I'm just trying to be, I, I want the bathroom too. I, I think it's something we need to have done. I don't think it's going to matter if we do another six months or nine months. I think we should. Marianne, first of all, let me stop, interrupt you. We couldn't have applied for grant till we have what we're looking at today. Exactly, I agree with we, that. We had to have a plan. We had to have John's site plan that he requested last year, and we had to have an estimate and a plan and a plan for a building. So, you know, we're you, at can, the point. you can you can pick apart why we didn't apply for a grant before now, but we we weren't in a position to apply for a grant. Well, then the question maybe is, should we apply for a grant given where we are? I mean, should we should we spend seventy thousand dollars, or should we spend half of that and apply for a grant for it? I'm I'm just asking, in, just in a fiduciary sense. I mean, that's all I'm asking for. I want to have the I want to have the bathrooms, but I'm also wanting to save our use our money wisely. And I'm just saying, seventy grand when we have got a whole bunch of other things on our list. Including, you know, trail and streets to escape. What's the chances? Well, I, the, the, I the, the cost that you have here, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be half. Um, they don't pay for the engineering. The contingency wouldn't be there. So if you, if you said it was 70, um, you, you then you got to pay your Davis Bacon wages. That 70 goes up to 85. <laughs> you know, I mean, you spend more money to get the grants. So you have to spend the money to go for the grant application which takes some time and dollars. Um, the likelihood is at this time, usually they don't, they don't select you on the first time around. They like to see that you're committed to it. And that's just from experience. I mean, it, you could get selected the first time right away. Um, then she asked, what's the likelihood? I don't know. It's, it's, you know. it's always good to apply for them because it, it, for a couple of reasons, it tells the, the granting agencies that you're serious about developing Boy Scout Park to what the desires of the townships are. And so if you're doing phases, it shows a commitment on your part. Um, it won't happen soon. Uh, you know, it, it could be a year, it could be two years, it could be longer. It, it, it's just a guess, it really is. 
we can hire local people. We don't have to go out to the state. We sent $400,000 out of Sheboygan County this summer. I don't want to send any more money out of our township. I don't think that has anything to do with what we're talking about, whether we get a grant or we don't get a grant. No, you have to go on the... Um, you have to pay on the wages that are due. Yeah, you have to pay wages. the wages that they tell you to pay. Yeah. And we can do it a lot less expensive here with local contractors, and our people can get jobs. What's That's the pleasure of the board? What would you like to do? I want to move forward with it. I like the layout and the design. I like what Paul's done. I want to see the eave expanded. I want to see the, uh, the difference in cost that Dennis suggested. I want to see how the maintenance of this thing would take place, you know, whether the truck backing across the sidewalk and the sidewalk can handle it or not, that kind of thing. But I want to move forward. I don't want to wait another, you know, I. I postponed doing it this summer so that I could see conceptually where it would be and how it would be located amongst other things that would be done in the future. Grants are a great idea, but there's lots of things in here that we could do the grant for, whether it be the trail or the, or the playground or the parking lot, any of these other things we can do the grants. But the bathroom part of it, I'd like to move forward on. Is that a motion? Dennis, where are you? In discussion right now. I'm kind of uh, with John in my thinking. We've been talking about this now for at least three years. And uh, I think it's time to move. Kathy? I agree also. And I think it's time that we move on this. Where should we go? There's no guarantee to... that the grant will go through, then we're going to, it could be two or three years down the road. Costs go up every year. If we don't get it, we never. Gone down the last couple of years. Okay. Oh, that's not good. Good. Thing, but, but it's good. on the way up. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I want to go on with it too. I just feel bad that we didn't have a gone for a grant. It, and it's, it's really part of our leadership that we didn't. What, how, whatever the rationale was, we could have been working on it. So I feel bad about that. Um, I also don't like the changing room area. I think that's just way too much for a outdoor thing. That I, I'd like to see a state park one that has a changing room in it. But I do like the idea that Dennis had about making it a room for half the size of this for storage, because we need to have storage. That's the only change I'd make to it. I just. I just don't think we need a change room, but we definitely need a storage room. So I'm fine with that. So we need a motion that incorporates what people want in it. You gonna go for it? I'm trying to think of how to word the motion so that it includes these things, or if you want to come back and review them before you give fine. I don't know how you want to move forward. I'm to say, well, there, there's a proposal there's a proposal in front of us. I mean, basically, with a with a a, uh, a bid, or not a bid, but a uh, a probable cost estimate. So, I think that the what should and he also has a schedule that he's given us. So there's a schedule already put together. Correct. Um, well, we've changed the design and we've changed the cost. Yeah. What I would do is I would. I would so make the motion. I would, I would make the motion based on the changes in the design and staying within the cost that he's already got, unless he comes back with us with the change order. Change order. No, I, think do the, that? I think the, the items you're talking about are insignificant with the overall project cost. That won't be a change change order price cost. For we went through this before. We had a change, and then we never considered the cost. We need to yeah, you're referring that. to our services? No. You're talking about the change in cost of the project cost? Yeah, that's yeah. what she's they're talking gonna, about. They're going to be insignificant. I've got a 15% contingency that's as well going to cover it. it, it 
it really is. I can't you're guess that well. There's gonna, you're going to have to redraw all of this. If, no, no, the changes we're making are basically you get two okay, foot overhand. Uh, we're just three. And yes. narrowing up the center four we're feet, two foot it's overhand. Not, I think that's almost a wash there. Okay. We're, uh, yeah, we're, we're not talking. You're gonna, it's going to be 2,000 here, 3,000 there. That's what it's going to be. I'm not that good of a guesser. There's going to be a contract to just sign his name. Well, I think guess. what we need to decide oh, then are the change on the um, changing room versus storage or a combination thereof. We need to vote on that. And then we need to vote on the overhang, and then we need to vote on the, what was the other thing, the wall that Dennis suggested. I mean, there's three or four things that are out there. So I think that all needs to go in the motion. Do you want to do that? Um, I think I'm... I felt that there was more interest in building it the way he's got it shown and then using, if we wanted to in the future, come back and add FRP. Oh, okay. Rather than put that in right now. You want to okay. leave it just like this? Yeah. No changes in the changing? No, he's so talking the FRP. Nothing? No, he's talking I was talking about the FRP, FRP. Oh, the, okay. the wall that panels for later. cleaning. He said the, the okay. cleaning panels. Okay, panels later. If we Just need to not, do not it. even worry about it now. If, okay. we, if no. we need to do it, depends on cleaning. So the overhang and the changing room. Who wants to keep the changing room as it is? Let's get there. One. Well, how much are you shrinking? How much are you? Yeah. I I think we would go four feet. We would take two. We would leave. Take two feet out of there. You can't have a changing room and a. Um, you can have a large storage closet. You could, yeah, but you don't need a six foot by seven foot storage you closet. Have, you no, you don't have need it, but you half. could have it. Yeah, but why would you? Well, I guess underneath these, is this a cement slab, right? I don't know that. Oh, that's what or I'm thinking. Is it a precast vault? Under, under the toilet building, there are there uh, precast vaults with a, uh, a concrete slab over top of it to support bottom of the restrooms. In between the change would be a slab on grade with, with a foundation. So there's room to shrink it then. The vaults could come closer together. You could shrink the vault, you could shrink it down. Um, you could take the whole thing out of it if you wanted to. That's what most of these other ones are. That's why I'm asking these yeah. questions. If it's a precast vault and that's the size that it is, you yeah. can't shrink it. The, the size of the toilet building the, the restroom itself, you wouldn't want to shrink mostly no, for yeah. ADA compliance. No, I'm not no. asking about that. So the just whole thing as a concept is yeah, not what, what would needs. The change rooms, you could, you could make that. It's six foot now. You need a door. You need at least you know some framing on the side, so it's four foot. So you could shrink it possibly from six foot to four foot. That would be the extent. Then you, then and then you, it's seven foot long. Take. Or the other option is you leave it at six foot, and you put that interior wall in the back end. You have a six foot wide, you know, you pay a little bit more for a foot each side or so, and you have a lockable door inside that changing room that you could right. have both. You could be dual purpose if you would. Yeah, I like that's all it puts up. What's the purpose? I mean, this changing room thing, what, why are you so. Well, I just think it's a room? great idea if, 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 if you've got a lot of people there and each so side can, is busy. You've got a place to come in, change bathing suit and so forth. I'm Sometimes there's a lot of people out there at reunions and stuff. Yeah, I'm not necessarily sold on the changing room concept of it, but I like the closet idea of it. Yeah, so do I. And that closet idea of it uh, makes sense to keep it a bigger closet than to shrink it down and make it a smaller closet. But you, you wouldn't make a, you a six foot by seven foot or. closet. Either or. Yeah, you have that option. Okay. Uh, That's the way I, you don't like it. You don't like having the option. I don't see any reason to have the changing room in the middle. I, I just don't see it. I mean, we don't have a changing room down here. But what if you want to store your mower in there? I. I think if we want to store more in there, that's a different option. That's a different question. But I'm not sure we're going to be hand mowing out there. I understand. I'm just throwing I know. out. I know. But I do want to store bounty towel, toilet paper, you know, cleaning supplies, that yeah, kind of I'd stuff. I'd like to keep it the size it is and then decide later what we want to use it for. Why then spend we can the money? Sort of plan. Why we can sort of plan ahead for future uses. We cut it down now, and then we go. Oh, gee, 
but we don't need to. We know we have a bathroom right over here. We know what we need. We need a two toilets. We got four toilets here and a and a supply room. I, I well, mean, it's two I, feet, so you know, one way or another. <laughs> yeah. I want. I don't. I don't want a changing room. I want a supply room, and I don't want it six foot by seven feet. That's ridiculous. I'd rather have it four feet by seven feet. You gotta do that for a door. I just don't see any reason. I'm for fine it. with that. I'm just fine for, with just, that. Just as a for, as a comment. Okay. So let's. We're getting close to the motion. We you have want the four overhead. Four by seven. Well, that's what. Did, okay. did four by seven. No, we haven't voted. Not. We're just trying to put it in, get it ready for a vote. What about the overhang? Does anybody have a problem with the overhang? No, I don't. Do you have a problem with the overhang? Extending no, uh, the overhang? No, I do not have a problem with extending the overhang. Okay, so now I think you could do a motion. Four feet by seven feet change and the overhang are the only two changes we have. All right, so I'll make a motion to put the two foot overhang and the four foot by seven foot change is what you're saying? Four foot by seven. Storage room. Storage, Storage room. room, no changing. Uh, no changing. Well, yeah, we can turn it either way in the design. So. But anyway, uh, and then the the truck has to have access to that. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, with those changes, I make a motion to move forward with the proposal from late then. Okay, is there a second? I'll support it. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, Thank you we'll, very we'll much. change the plans. We'll get them back to you just for a final review. Uh, we got three permits to um, acquire. One is for the uh, soil erosion controls for Boynton County. One is for the district health department four for replacement fault system. And then DEQ because we cure within 500 feet of a lake. So um, there's uh, some minor fees for that. I'll, I'll coordinate that with you. Um, for the permit applications. Um, no rebuilding permit. Contractors will do that. Okay. Yeah, that will be his cost because he'll be responsible for it. Yeah. And the, the drop dead date is what, June 15th? The what? The, uh, the end of it, June 15th, is that right? Um, I see you've got May something. Yeah, I, I actually have, I got a ribbon cut. But June 13th. Right for Father's Day for the bulk of it. But uh, <laughs> final completion, I got May 23rd, according to the schedule. Okay. Okay, could we just on the same topic, um, could we form a committee um, of people living on the other side of the lake to continue to, under Rachel's leadership, to continue um, looking at this design for Boy Scout Park long term and come up with a long term plan for it that would, that could come to the board at some point in time? Yeah, the way you worded that, there's only one person eligible. So. Well, no, I'm thinking of people like, you know, <laughs> Marsha. Oh, you're thinking of residents or yeah, something? Okay. Yeah, yeah, residents. Sure. I'm thinking of people that live on the other side of the lake. You so know. What did you have in mind? Well, I thought uh, John Brown for sure. I thought Bill Elliott, maybe Marsha Olakowski, mm -hmm. maybe Jim Zirmick, maybe Bill uh, Morgan. I'd like I mean, to volunteer John Parrott, too. If I John Parrott? Yeah, John would be a good one. Anyway, I I have four or five ideas. I just think um, we should get a group together and and then do a public hearing and see what they think about the long term of you know what we're looking at. And maybe we could do it when we're over on that side of the lake for our meeting in the spring. I think we have a meeting in the spring. So is that something you'd want to do, Rachel? With sure. John, would yeah, you want to be on that committee? Sure, I'd be on. Okay. Sure, I'd be happy to work on it. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay. <coughs> I don't know what should we take on next. How about the blight ordinance? It's not very complicated. Everybody has had ample time to look at the blight ordinance. So I think the 
we have a couple of questions before we um, decide we're going to vote on it or not. But one is um, under Section 4, Enforcement of the Ordinance. I personally, I, I had a suggested change for the um, ordinance officer would report to the supervisor. And the reason I put that in there was because later on we have it where the um, the person that's getting um, cited can come back to the board and ask for an appeal. So if the board is the takes every single one of these when every blight violation is prepared and it comes in front of the board, then you don't have an objective board when it comes back to do the appeal. So I was trying to figure out a way if you had the ordinance, the blight ordinance working for under the direction of one person, you would not bias the board, which is I think Rachel's um, idea here, have everybody report to the board. I'm just not sure how then you can have, if, they, if the person appeals, how you can have an objective board. I mean, I can step out, but if the whole board has already seen every single blight ordinance, every single blight, then you can't have an objective board when they do a, because you've already set, assumed it was blight. So what I'm- section are you on? Please. Section four. If you look at my proposal A, and then your proposal A, B, or A, the difference between the two is just the issue of objectivity under C where it says that may appeal to the full board of Mullet Township. The written request, blah, 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 to the township clerk. There's no objectivity if the whole board um, reports every single violation is reported to the board because the board has already then endorsed every violation. So there's no, there's no justice in it. So I don't know, that's just my, my only comment about it. So you want to report to you and then you to step out of the vote on yeah. the appeal process? Yeah, yeah. Not that I think, you know, I think this is a privacy issue in, in many ways if somebody's got a blight, you know. And so I, it, if every time it comes to the board, everybody in the whole area is going to know that the person has got blight. And I'm thinking, you know, Okay, they we, they can know when they come and appeal, but why does everybody have to know that we're working on this one person's life? I mean, I I just feel give the person some dignity where they can clean it up. Is what I'm thinking. I mean, it's really I, I don't know. I I didn't talk to Tim about the conflict of interest, but um, and the objectivity, but I don't see how it couldn't be. Was my issue. If you read C, there's just no way if the board assent, agrees to every single one of them that you have any objectivity. Other than that, I think there, there weren't any other changes that were suggested that weren't already incorporated. And I think the biggest change that you, you see here is, you know, he's just, he's taking it down to junk trash and rubbish. <coughs> so what's the pleasure of the board on this void ordinance? You want to move forward with it, you want to table it, you want to uh, vote on it and decide whether we want to do it at all or what. With some discussions that we've had at the MTA, the county MTA, it seems like the other county, other townships within Sheboygan County that have a blight ordinance, the majority of them is the supervisor that's doing the approaching the the, uh, uh, the individuals. Right. So I think, and, and they seem to be getting good action that way, and I think, why should we try to do something different? 